Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Trading Daddies podcast hosted by yours truly, Nico Reyes, and my awesome co-host. Hot and ready. Hot and ready, Tefleezy Foshizi, who doesn't believe in diversity portfolios. So, <laughs> diversification is an old wooden ship, as, as Ron Bergen said. <laughs> and we are also graced with... Hey guys, it's Ricky. Ricky is back for the second time. Um, we enjoyed his presence the first episode, so you know what? We uh, cast a net out there, and he said, yeah, let's do it again. So we're happy to have Ricky here. Thank you very much, good sir. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Sure. We, we talked about uh, we talked about Walmart, talked about Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, Palantir heavily. We talked about – we answered a lot of questions. Uh, yeah, thank you for the ones that uh, posted the questions. Uh, thank you so much for, you know, a- entertaining us and – you know, we're just doing the, our best to uh, entertain you guys back. So, Nice, 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 nice. Well, with that being said, follow us on our socials. Hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the post notification bell so you guys get a nice ding, ding, ding every time a new episode comes up. Give us a preemptive thumbs up. Comments are always welcome. And we'll catch you guys on the episode. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Trading Daddies podcast, hosted by yours truly, Nico Reyes, and as always, my amazing co-host. What's up, daddies? Hot and ready here. Hot and ready, Tefleezy, Foshizy. Not all up in your busy, but I know who will be. Ricky is back. Ricky is back for another round. Good friend of the pod. How's it going, my? How's it hanging, actually? <laughs> That's going pretty well, bro. It's going pretty well. What's up, Ricky? What's going on, Jim? I miss you. How you guys. been, dude? How what's changed since the last time we got you on? Um I stopped being a DJ so much. Um nice. portfolio nice. wise, you know, I stopped being a DJ so much. Um life wise, um just getting ready for this uh for the baby girl. Um mm. I remember last time you guys announced it on the show that I'm yep. having a kid. Um, now right I'm going to let you guys know that it's a girl and she's doing yeah. pretty healthy right now. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, you know what? We accidentally spilled the beans. <laughs> My wife was like, you told him? I was like, huh? No, they guessed. <laughs> Did you guys know that, um, that, um, depending on how you guys, uh, create the baby determines the gender. I heard about that. Yeah. So let, let's say, for example, you you finish with your leg extended. <laughs> right? That's like a manly gesture. Okay. That means that you're going to have a boy. But, like, if you have, like, if you get excited too much and you kind of curl it, you know, first kiss curl your leg. <laughs> that's that's, that's going to be a girl. Thinking about it now, I think you may be right. Like, you curled, right? You curled. It was too, it was like, the emotions were too high. And you curled it. Now that's a girl for sure. I don't think it was really curling. I think it was more. Never mind. We should... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, how's the uh, how's your week been though? How's the uh, how's trading? Um, it's been pretty good. Um, so with my account, I'm pretty heavy. Um, I started doing more dividend stocks. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty heavy in PSEC, uh, P-S-E-C. Um, I'm about already halfway to my goal. Nice. Um, just so just a little more. So I diversified a little bit instead of focusing on that. So I know John um, told me about ARR, which is, I think, Armored Residential. Yeah. Uh, so I started, I started a position in that, a small one. But, um, um, yeah, I just started – you know, getting my foot in the door, um, you know, make a couple extra dollars a month. But other than that, that's that's all I've been really focusing on. Um, options wise, I haven't really been touching it um, just because uh, I told you guys my story, you know, mm-hmm. pay some debt down, uh, put whatever aside I can and then put that towards the market and, you know, towards the dividend. So I make something back every month. So nice. that's what mm-hmm. I've actually been doing. Very yeah. solid strategy, by the way. That's, uh... <laughs> And that's a like I think that's is it that a full one eighty from what you were currently what, what you were doing before? Um, most it's more like a three sixty. I was oh, uh, <laughs> three sixty. You mean you're you're back where you're, you're at? Back. You're, you're a degenerate again. <laughs> where I'm at, but I'm different. 
like, your same thing, but different. But different. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I mean, 720. <laughs> we'll keep going up from <laughs> We'll keep going. Up what is this, Tony Hawk? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, uh, thanks to you guys, you know, it kind of opened up my eyes to be like, you know, the stock market's always going to be here. Um, I might as well start helping myself out now, paying off some debt uh, that I'm currently in from Good. my 20s, and you know, I still at least you know invest so. And of course yeah. that, of course that uh that thing you texted me as well. There's a difference between investor and a trader, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and that hit that hit pretty hard because I was like, I'm not really a trader because I don't really like reading charts. But yeah, uh... <laughs> you know, I haven't even asked you about that. I I know uh, so, uh, Ricky. Um, this is how accessible we are, right? <laughs> This is how accessible John and I are. We actually have a group text with Ricky, and we we, we talk damn near every day. <laughs> and um, that's how we like to interact with with just not. I mean, Ricky's been a friend for a while now, but you know, like without even asking, the group chat started, and we're all talking in there. So, um, if you guys happen to find our phone numbers, <laughs> we're not going to give it out here. <laughs> but ask, and you shall receive. Uh, but you also you can hit us up on the Discord. So definitely, we're very interactive on the Discord too. If you guys don't want to, if you guys don't want to be that personal, but you know, it's, it's definitely there. But um, we've seen Ricky mature financially in a way that makes us extremely proud. Because uh, from from just throwing yolo <laughs> from just throwing yolo calls at forty five cents, <laughs> make hella gains on Tesla the next day to what he's doing now and he's actually building it because he understands now that Rome wasn't built in a day and wealth isn't also built overnight. Um, mm-hmm. You'll get lucky here and there. Yeah, that's true, right? But what do you do with that with that luck? Do you do you YOLO it all again to, to double up? No, you actually have to diversify your funds in a way where, yeah, you can take 10% and YOLO it out and see what happens, right? But at least that's only 10% of what you gain. Mm-hmm. So we really have to stop looking at the stock market as a casino, but as a vessel for us to create more wealth down the road. Yeah. This is, this is, I've noticed this. We're in a, in a, in a, in a, in a time in the stock market that the institutional investors, yeah, they have the biggest capital. True. But now there's so many retail investors that we're moving markets ourselves. Mm-hmm. We're getting there. We're getting to that point. Yeah, just like uh, what happened with all the uh, the meme stocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> we were oh, able shout to, to wow. shout out to Gil, by the way. That guy's deposition was like legendary. That guy's deposition was so good. Did you guys I'm hear what he said? <laughs> he said that I'm not a financial advisor, but I like the stock. Like. <laughs> <laughs> He also said, I'm not a cat. <laughs> you know, he, he doubled down on uh, GameStop, right? He added, uh, I think, 50,000 shares or, or whatever. Oh, my God. Yeah. He doubled down, uh, he doubled down on it, and uh, I wish he, he did that with AMC, but never mind. No, I'm, you know, I'm kind of salty about AMC. I'm not going to lie. I mean, that, that, that trade is done and dealt with. It expired. It expired yesterday. It expired yesterday. We didn't Whatever. do anything about it, right? <clears throat> as, we, as we as we said, it was going to expire, and it did expire. <clears throat> I don't know. I just feel like we could have uh, reloaded. You know what? AMC AMC leaps for twenty twenty two. Oh God, no! No, <laughs> dude, yeah. hear me out. No, oh, hear, <laughs> hear me no, out. I'm, I'm done with it. Okay, I threw, right. threw twelve hundred on it, man. Come on, John. Whatever happened to being apes together? Did it, well, did that's it, my groceries a month, man. <laughs> John sends me a text message saying, <clears throat> "John sends me a a, a a video and he goes, yeah, this is this is kind of us.'" And I'm like, "Dude, yeah, if you go down, I'm gonna go down with you." <laughs> and because we're still in this Tesla trade, and John, whatever happened, let's let's, let's do it and see. <laughs> Man, that 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 video I tagged you on was perfect. Um, it was a uh, the, the girl fell on the stairs, and then I guess the husband fell on the stairs as well because the, the the steps were slippery. And I, I straight up told Nico, I was like, dude, this is us like lately with Tesla, Palantir, and uh, Neo, because like this entire week, you know, Neo and Tesla, they've been like 
irrelevant. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> they haven't done much. No. Uh, Palantir, however, kind of gave us some hope. I, you want me to make a bullish case on Palantir again? Well, we can talk about it now because we, we uh, you know, it's the uh, the the stock of the week because everyone's been talking about it, and um, you know, Reddit is actually on Palantir's butt right now. Is that? Are we squeezing? I don't think we were ever shorted. We were were we shorted? I think it was a sell. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, the short interest is still high, but um, you know, Wall Street bets and uh, you know Reddit, they're they're on uh, Palantir's ass right now. So. Uh, who knows? We might see 34 next week. We might even see 40 next week. Okay, I'll be happy with like 42. I'm let's get there. back to 42. <laughs> All right, let's get back to 42. I think 42 is such a great number uh, and it's a healthy number. So why don't you tell me what you texted me the other night, how you wanted to drop Tessa and Neo and go for a hundred percent. How about, how about <laughs> let me, let me, let me ask, let me answer that question by going to the q a's because i'm going to answer that question with the q a yeah right right we're going to do we're going to do um we're going to do a question and answer uh and we're going to do a round table so john's going to ask the question i'm going to answer ricky's going to answer and john's going to answer for sure okay like um actually let's do um the first question uh ricky actually you can you can answer this one too um if i can find it okay so selena monique uh, had asked me on Instagram, what inspired you to uh, to get into stocks? Ooh. That's a, um, you really want my answer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, the casino was too far. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what do you love again? I live in Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh, that's right. I mean, lucky <laughs> chances, you know. If you're driving to Reno in the snow all the time. <laughs> California Grand's down the freeway. I know. Is it closed? But I work there, and it's weird playing there. Oh, yeah, you're so right. So I was just like, ah, you guys know me already. You guys know how I play. I see everybody on, like, a daily basis. It's meh, and I don't want to go to the Oaks. I don't want to go to Cash Creek. I don't want to go to Thunder Oaks, Valley. Man. Snake. There's something I don't, there's something that I don't like about California casinos in general. It's all it's all cards. It's mm-hmm. it's weird. Like I tried to play roulette and they had to spin this stupid wheel with cards. I'm like, dude, what is this? This isn't right. <clears throat> exactly. Or craps with cards. Craps with cards. Come on. That's terrible. Terrible. Like how terrible. did like who, who's whose bright idea is this? Like <laughs> what cockamamie idea did you come up with? <laughs> terrible. What about you, Nico? What inspired me is um, what inspired me is to like I, I just wanted to go on an adventure, really. Like a rocket ship. Like a rocket ship. We're on a, on this rocket ship that we're building currently, and we're about to fly to the moon. Um, I feel that um, having one source of income, especially in this climate, is not going to be sustainable in the future, and. I didn't go to school. I didn't go. I didn't finish college. I went to half college. I didn't even finish half college. So technically, I went to quarter college. (laughs) So, and and the most the most of the time when I was when I was went to quarter college, I was smoking a lot of weed. So, what kind of school did I actually go to? Right. I went. I tried doing real estate. I went into the real estate class, and, and the classrooms are just not my thing. Like I hate being classrooms. It's it's boring. I get sleepy. Mm-hmm. I get distracted. Mm-hmm. Right when you're when you're eighteen, nineteen, you go into school. You don't go to school just to go to school. You go to school to meet ladies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. And, that's, and it's just and when there's no ladies, like what are you going to go to school for? You just want to smoke some weed at that point. Um, so I've been bouncing around from job to job, and finally I, I found a career that I like, which is my current nine to five. Um, but I feel that there's always going to be, I have this deep seated fear that <clears throat> I'm going to lose my position, not by me, not doing my job, but by, by the economy. Right. Um, we grew up in the Bush era where we lived through the, the recession. Jobs were really hard to find, especially if you're not college educated and you don't have a degree, mm-hmm. you're not going to get looked at. Right. <clears throat> Things are turning a little bit different now because more people are hiring non-college graduates. 
but do you really want to take that gamble? So I wanted to take things, uh, take matters into my own hands and learn a skill so that I can potentially provide for my family in the future. But it's still a process. We're still learning. We're all students of the game. And mm -hmm. I want to be able to um, be more consistent. So eventually, when the hammer drops... I'll be comfortable knowing that I have a way to make, to put food on the table. <clears throat> How about you, Fair John? Enough. Fair enough. Um, what well, made me uh, interested about the, uh, or inspired me to uh, get into stocks is um, the financial freedom. So basically, uh, you know, we're using money as a tool and it's basically just buying us more time, right? Um, you know, I was, no offense to nine to five jobs, but you know, I was, I was, you know, I had a career for what, 14 years. And now I, I can't picture myself doing the same exact thing because, you know, I got three kids now um, and they're all back to back to backs. And it's just hard if you're a parent, um, it's just hard to be away from your kids, uh, especially, you know, we're talking about like 10, 12 hour uh, days, not including, you know, commutes. And um, what um, what really inspired me is that you know the unlimited amount of like money that you can make uh, i'm not saying you know you're, you're gonna make a million dollars tomorrow but you know if you're consistently doing like two three hundred dollars a day um it's definitely doable mm -hmm. uh, it's it's achievable uh you know don't it, it's it's only a mindset right and uh uh, when, when people say, you know, stock market is a scam, you know, if, if I can do it, anyone can do it, you know, and yes, I was, I spent seven years at UC DVC. Diablo Vacation Center, Harvard, Grand <laughs> Hall, CSU Sun Valley. <laughs> so I spent seven years at UC DVC and I did not graduate. Okay. Wait, you like, spent, dude, I, I couldn't last. A semester like I, I've yeah. I've gone to semesters I think if we're gonna put all the time together I probably went to DVC for one year <laughs> for one year I actually went three years to DVC but if we're gonna combine all the semesters that I've, I've only gone one year oh my god <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um I, I think I think that suits my answer uh you know financial freedom and then you know more time with the uh, the family yeah yeah all right yeah. Because it, it's like, what kind of gig can you do that, I mean, yeah, you wake up early and right? mm -hmm. you wake up at six, like six, six thirty in the morning, but you're done at one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you could do whatever you want to do after one. That's, that's a beautiful schedule. I'd live, I'd go, I'd do that every day and you get to sleep in till eight on, damn it. That's yeah. how old I'm <laughs> eight is sleeping in. <laughs> well, thanks for the question. Um, here, I, I got another one. I got plenty of questions today. S Simon the Third. Oh, Simonski. Simonski. The, of the pod, Simonski. Oh, he, he's, he's congratulations. A by the way, he's like he's winning. He, he's a homie. Yeah, yeah I think I think his accounts up. Uh, I think eight, nine grand uh, since he started. Congratulations. Uh, so he's uh, investing, and that's nice. what I told him in the beginning. You know, I was like, you know what? Since since you 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 love your your nine to five. And you don't want to let go of it. Just why don't you invest, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what he did uh, back in June or July. And then it's grown. It's grown a lot. And he didn't even do anything. You know, he didn't even touch it, which is good. Uh, so he's super happy about it. Uh, let's see. Um, his question was, I find myself throwing everything in investments. What are some ways? Like that. <laughs> is it over? That's it. Some ways. Some ways. I don't know if that's a question or maybe a statement. I'm just gonna tell him, hey, you know what? Like, just keep investing. Yeah, just keep investing. You know, yeah. you're, we're 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 all young. Just keep investing. You know, obviously it works. You know, you you threw you started an account back in June or July, and obviously it's up like what forty percent or whatever uh, within a year. So. You know, there's no way there's what are some ways there, there's no other ways. Just keep investing. Just keep throwing, you know, like little chunks here and there and and let it compound, you know, like it'll grow. You just got to put some time in it. That's yeah. it. Put some time yeah. And, and we always we always we always always reiterate this time in the market versus timing the market. Yeah. There's no way for you to time the market. It's just it's 
the amount of stress that you're going to put on yourself to determine whether or not today's going to be the day. No, <laughs> like, 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 no, <laughs> no. I mean, Ricky's changed. He used to be a time. He used to time the market. Now he's. I used he's, to, I used to time the market. In the market, you know what I mean. Tesla. But, um, that was a wonderful and, and, timing. <laughs> yeah. Right. But let's let's talk about let's talk about that in 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 retrospect because Ricky's actually doing pretty much the same same thing that that simon's mm-hmm. doing it's a set it mm-hmm. and forget it type of investment strategy and it's not exactly. mm-hmm. a lot of people say that oh that's boring yeah is it really boring when you're making 40 percent returns year over year get out of here come on like dude that's not exactly. boring dude exactly. some some 401ks only make like 10 percent a year you know right? <laughs> yeah. exactly. All right. and i think hey, that goes me... back hold on i think that goes back to uh my question i think a couple episodes ago <clears throat> when I asked if it's okay to uh, average up um, with the dividend stock, and you're just like, mm-hmm. yeah, just keep putting money into it. You're put, you're getting money back anyways um, a mm-hmm. month with the dividend. So averaging up shouldn't be a problem, you know. So that's what I actually kept doing because oh, you I paid know, attention. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a changed man. Oh, you are. <laughs> you look at your man. <laughs> so, Here. so that's what um, I'm doing. Yeah, I I hear what you're saying. It doesn't matter if you're averaging up or averaging down, as long as you're investing your money right in the right company, because not all yes. you know are 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 right. Um, yeah. Here, and, and I got. Uh, can I pick here. it back real quick? And the ahead. companies that that he like, you know, we talk to him constantly too. Like he's he's a really good friend of ours. Um, and and the stocks that he invests in, the, his portfolio balance, it's it's actually pretty damn solid. It's not companies that will go tank tomorrow, right? Yeah. There's a reason why these companies pay a dividend. There's a reason. Yeah, that why. was um. He he showed me Simonski showed me a, a screenshot of his portfolio. I was like, dude, you're pretty well diversified. You have you have Salesforce, you have Walmart, you have Intel. Mm-hmm. You, you know, they're not like bunched up like you know. I'm I'm heavy on Palantir. Um, <laughs> He has CCIV in there. He has AGNC. He has real estate. He has, um, you know, semiconductors. He has, yeah. he, he's well diversified. He has retail in there. So, which so is he, pretty good. He's actually doing more than just dividend accounts. He's actually getting mm-hmm. into the growth stocks too, which is an amazing thing to do. Because yeah. I'm assuming, assuming um, he's a very, he, he's a very smart guy. And yeah. assuming that he's actually, you know, he did the research on these companies. So that's why that's the reason why he bought it. Because I, I know if I know Simon, he's not going to buy something that he doesn't understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, congratulations to him, actually. I'm super proud of that guy. Yeah. All right. So next question, since I got I got plenty. Rob, 100 buck. Um, what are some great stocks to hold for 10 plus years? Thanks for your time. Palantir. <laughs> gonna... yeah. That's one. That Palantir, um, Tesla is still the leader um, in in the EV space. I, I, sorry to uh, interrupt. Okay, so let's talk about Tesla. Okay, so Elon Musk, they're, he's trying to IPO SpaceX and uh, Starlink. Starlink. Okay, uh, SpaceX. Did you guys see that uh, that video of uh, the Mars rover? Yeah, dude, the memes are crazy. That that's pretty cool. I, yeah. I was watching a clip. I was like, "Oh crap!" Like, dude, we we got a rover in Mars. Like, mm-hmm. next thing you know, we got a city, and next thing you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is like the, the government of uh, Mars. <laughs> Quick, uh, get in the spaceship! <laughs> <laughs> but can you just imagine? You know, we're gonna see this in our lifetime. We are you know, probably fifty years from now, dude. We're we're probably gonna inhabit you know Mars and we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna have a, a Mars coin, its own currency, its own government, its own everything, right? Yeah. Like I'm gonna ask you, bro. Like Nico, be like, hey, what are you doing next week? Oh, I'm thinking about taking a trip to Mars. Wow. Right. <laughs> what if like, dude? I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting awesome. for the rover footage where the rover gets picked up by something. Like. <laughs> yeah, like uh, like a transformer. <laughs> Not a transformer, but like a uh, like a sentient being. Like you fix it up. Like, what are you looking at? Yeah, are you? <laughs> well, the study right now, they're they're trying to look for you know signs of life or, mm-hmm. or previous life, uh, like water here and there, such and such. But just just imagine, you know, the, the time that we live in now, you know, the technology and how we can take people, you know, to the moon or to space or to Mars, right? And uh, I mean, what's wrong with our planet? 
nothing wrong with our planet, but why, you know, why, why would you start another colony in, in, in Mars, right? I mean, but we, I think the dude's ahead of his time. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's a, he's a Martian, bro. Like, he just wants to go back home. Could you imagine, <laughs> can, you, can you imagine if there was life on Mars and you see our rover coming onto your planet? Yeah. Thinking it's like an alien attack? Exactly. <laughs> We're the alien, right? <laughs> Is, what if everyone's on your ground? That's kind of a nightmare scenario that they see the rover coming down. They're like, oh, we're getting attacked. All right, guys, load up. <laughs> <laughs> what, what if everyone's underground, right? Like, who knows? But um, going back to uh, Starlink, Starlink, uh, you know, I've read some, uh, I've done some research. Um, Starlink is actually taking in uh, pre orders, uh, $99 hold or whatever, or pre order. Um, you know, he, he's trying to revolutionize, you know, the internet because he wants everyone to have internet, right? Internet mm-hmm. access. And I think internet's going to get bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, just imagine, you know, you know, Tesla drivers, um, Tesla owners um, having, you know, 24 seven connection, you know, uninterrupted, um, especially like right now with, with this whole uh, fiasco in Texas, like no power, mm-hmm. like you don't have internet, you don't have connection, you know, like to the outside world, like, isn't that crazy? Like, yeah, so um, you're saying Starlink IPO go ham. Oh yeah, dude. I, I'm, I'm going to go into, dude, I'm going to go into SpaceX and Starlink. Oh yeah. Long hold. Cause I, th- I think space really didn't interest me until, you know, NASA landed that, that Mars Rover mm-hmm. and, um, until SpaceX Force. actually just, <laughs> They, they they also deployed uh, this week. Uh, they deployed sixty Starlink satellites uh, alone this week. And then, if you guys, uh, I know I asked you guys if you guys watched uh, Geostorm um, with Gerard Butler, <laughs> where you know these satellites can control the weather, right? You don't even know if these you know sa- Starlink satellites, you know, you don't even know if they're controlling weather right now. That's yeah. what's happening, you know. But here's a bullish case with, with Starlink and Tesla. I made this point in the last episode where all Tesla cars have an LTE uh, connection. Yeah. Right? And with Starlink, Starlink essentially is a satellite internet play. Yeah. It's a 5G satellite play. So once this is up and running, all Tesla vehicles will now have 5G. Mm-hmm. Updates are going to be faster. Right. Uh, diagnostics are going to be faster. Imagine having an issue with your car and it tells you, oh, there's something wrong with you. At a, at a, you know, this is your nearest service station. Go there now. And when you go there, all the information is already loaded up. They don't have to diagnose anything and they just know what to do to fix it. Right. I mean, that's the, the, the Internet revolution that we're I mean, it's already the Internet revolution already happened. But I think the, the Internet is transforming in a way that. There, it's going to be a lot more beneficial for us, and I think the Jetsons are coming. <laughs> the Jetsons from are Mars, coming. from Mars, from Mars. The Jetsons are coming from Mars. What's your take, Rick? Um, I'd do it. I'm, I'm in it. Are you guys in it? I'm in it. Starling. Star- <laughs> again, wow. Again, so what happened to the, the whole uh, 360? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a long-term investment, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not financial advisors, so please, exactly. you know, we're, <laughs> we're gonna say this right now. <laughs> what we do, Ricky, Ricky does out of his own, own research and his yes. own volition. <sighs> we do not influence him in any way, shape, nor form. <laughs> I Ricky read Google. Quite in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, long-term investment-wise, I feel like yeah, you guys are, you know, you know, the points on for Starlink and everything else is. On point. I mean, just imagine. I mean, we saw Tesla. Tesla started off at what? Maybe seventeen. Seventeen dollars, and now it's seven hundred, eight hundred dollars after a split. Yeah. So if you think about like Starlink and stuff, maybe it starts off small. Um, mm-hmm. Down the road, I mean, it may turn into a you know like another Tesla company or a Tesla mm-hmm. stock you know price. So, yeah. I mean, that's something that, you know, I'm going to look into and more, more than likely do just to, you know, s- you know, secure a long hold and, you know, just not even worry about a long, you know, long term down the road. Since uh, it's an internet company, I, I won't be surprised if they start paying dividends because oh, majority yeah. of the, the internet companies, they pay dividends. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Like they're they're an ISP. Yeah. 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 So which is not bad. So I, I'd rather, you know, put money on that one. Exactly. Um here, let, let's let's move on. Uh next question is Sparky G Paco seventeen. Um, this is this is actually a good question because uh, we we've seen a lot of dips uh lately. So what to do when the market is bearish? Hold. <laughs> Cry. Hold. Cry. 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 Hold. Pray. Pray. Figure um, like do something else. Like not 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 quit the stock market, but like do something <laughs> that would pass your time because watching that. Well, is I don't know. Like you know. What what do you what else do you, do you bake? You learn how to cook? <laughs> yeah, I've been cooking a lot. I, know. <laughs> I had I had ribeye and scallops. Oh my god! Play average go, average up on top uh, top ramen. Average yeah, up, right. Make some ice cream ice ice sandwiches, ice block sandwiches with pepper. <laughs> with pepper. Hey, pepper. Some, some of these people on Discord, they, they've been really creative. Like, oh, you can afford uh, pepper. <laughs> Somebody said somebody said put sugar in an ice cube. I'm like, dude, that's a popsicle. <laughs> yeah, because we, we had a rough patch uh this week. What was it? Uh Tuesday or, or Wednesday, or whatever. Uh the market was just down like a percent, and we're like, oh crap, like what are we having for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Can't even afford lettuce. Bread with ice on top. <laughs> Who posted that, man? It was like, look what I'm having for lunch. A uh, fucking piece of bread with ice on top. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. um, put some sugar in it. Yeah, it's a popsicle. No, um, what, you, what you do is, um, so, I mean, Jeff said it best in, in the last episode. If you can't handle the downswings, then you don't deserve the upswings. <clears throat> He said it. That's the best thing that I've heard in, in in a while, and the reasoning for that is we have to take a look at the stock market as as uh, as a hill, and it, it, there's ebbs and flows to this, right? It's not a it's not a linear shot. You'll see a stock that goes up parabolically, and that's fine. But when you're having a a, a red day yourself, right? Hopefully that you didn't go deep in your margins that you're you, you now you know margin call, and we've experienced that this week actually. Uh, so uh, there's a joke there somewhere. Hold on a second. So I was a little worried. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that you didn't go deep inside your your margins that you are now in a margin call and you had some cash uh, left. I remember that John said before that cash is also a position. Cash is definitely a position because in these downtrends, if you found bottom, if if you've traded and you've seen um, you've seen the bottom of a stock, then it's time to load up. It's really time to load up because you're going to see some good gains, you know, upwards, right? Um, if you bought the stock at let's say twelve dollars, right, and you see it now, and you you see it hit like thirty eight, and it's now dipping down to twenty five. If you're afraid to add more because it's going to mess up with your average, you don't deserve that stock. Just know that it's not going to get back to 12 anymore. You're you're kind of hoping to get back to nine at that point. Uh -huh. It's not going to happen, right? <clears throat> you're essentially buying more and you're still making incremental gains. So you're just averaging up. And um, <laughs> back to the margin call. So, <laughs> so John and I experienced margin calls this week, right? Because of how heavy we are in Palantir. <laughs> Valentine's Day was last, <laughs> last week and John goes... My crush didn't call me, but you know who did? My broker did because of a margin call. <laughs> <laughs> the only call that I got from Valentine's Day was a margin, was a margin call. call. <laughs> but, like two out of four of my accounts, like they, they straight up said, you're pretty heavy on Palantir. You need to like go something. I'm like, no, it's going to bounce. <laughs> no. It did. They, they, they got off my back. Yeah. <laughs> we needed we needed that uh, abandoned, the abandoned baby um, candle. We definitely needed that. But uh, yeah, how how do you guys deal with that stuff? Same answer. I mean, I, I want to say I don't want to say hold on to to things um, or hold on to the stocks. But if the uh, if the story changed, like let's say the fundamentals, like for example, I'll use we're we're also going to talk about Walmart. If Walmart decides you know they're not a grocery store anymore or a retail store anymore, then the scenario changes, right? The the the, fun, the fundamentals changes, right? So you let go of that easily. 
because mm -hmm. everyone's known, you know, Walmart as a, a retail giant. But if they start selling, you know, I don't know, lingerie tomorrow, just strictly lingerie, you're going to be like, OK, what what the hell? Obviously, that's a that's a drop right there. Um, but if the the fundamentals don't change and we're just experiencing, you know, a down trend, uh, a bearish trend, you know, if it pays dividends, you're still you still have money coming in. Mm hmm. You still have money coming in, regardless if it's if it's going down, uh, not to your favor. Um, but yeah, so the folks who held on to the correction last year are actually they've actually doubled or tripled their money. Yeah. Today. Had we held on to the correction, yep. we would be up up right now. Yeah. And that's the lesson that we definitely learned. That's the reason why we're so like heavy handed and and diamond handed on certain stocks because yep. we experienced the correction and we didn't hold. Yeah. So that's um, to answer your question, you know, that's that's a scenario last year, you know, when the when the market corrected. So mm -hmm. and we're, we're due for a correction pretty soon, too. Yeah. So please be prepared. Hopefully <clears throat> make well, sure that you guys have cash. I, I, I want to let you know um, that next this week, which is this week, um, it's going to be the one year anniversary of when the market started crashing mm. last year. Yeah. Hmm. 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 COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so, a very loaded question, Ricky. And yeah, your answer was COVID. <laughs> that, uh, here, here, here. I got, I got, a, I got a, a few more. Um, Jared Docs P uh, says Spy Four Hundred. That's not even a question, but I get. <laughs> It's a statement. Spy four hundred, dude. It's like next door. Could be tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Like, so we're we've been teetering around that. This this past week has been the let's test four hundred week. Yeah. Um. If we ever hit four hundred, two scenarios, right? It's either it dumps, right? Because we've hit all time high. Yeah. But if it goes past four hundred, so let's say we see four four oh one or four oh two, expect that to move up higher. Yeah. Um, I got another question. Trading Poppy. Oh, smart guy. Yeah, handsome too. <laughs> why does I, just smart? Why does Robin Hood suck? <laughs> 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 All right, so we're we're not biased against you know Robin Hood, but me personally, I, I use Robin Hood. Um, you know, back in the days, and uh, it doesn't make sense for you to pay five bucks a month for level two access. Mm -hmm. Like. Every other broker has it for free. Come on now. For those um, who don't yeah. know, can you explain level two real quick? Le level two is when you, you get to see, it's like a cheat sheet. It's it, I don't even know if it's legal. But level two is pretty much um, where you see buyers and sellers. Okay, it's, it's the market itself. So you get to see if there's a huge buyer at a certain price or a huge seller at a certain price. So it kind of tells you when to exit or when to enter, you know, it, you know. It helps me out. I mean, I've yeah. used it. Um, I watched it for Palantir this week. <laughs> yeah, we did. Um, we saw, what was it? Uh, was it Tuesday or Wednesday? Uh, we saw a huge support at 25. Uh, mm -hmm. We saw a huge support at 27. Um, and thanks to uh, Level 2, you don't have to pay five bucks a month. That's, mm -mm. that's a scam. Mm -mm. That is a scam. Mm -mm. And I don't see, I mean, yeah, I mean, people use, some people use Robinhood just to execute the trades, <clears throat> but you're also paying to use another charting tool, right? So why pay chart, that charting tool that you're paying already has level two in it. So why do you need to double the payments? You know what I mean? That doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah, Robinhood's pretty. Let's not, let's not. Yeah, it's user friendly. Yeah, it's user it really friendly. is. It's pretty. Right. It, it kind of explains to you what you're doing wrong. Right. But what the past few weeks or the past month has ever sh has showed us is they're not really democratizing the stock market. They're not in it for you. They're not mm -hmm. in it for you. Like, dude, can you imagine that? Like they shut down the way that you could you can make money. Like imagine if you're heavy on AMC, like let's just be real. We were um, you were heavy on AMC and then somebody says, no, you can't trade that. That's not right, bro. That's not right, dude. Yeah. That's not right by any means. Like, a lot of people lost money. Like, people made millions are now reduced to rubble mm -hmm. just because they stopped letting you buy and sell GameStop. Yep. 
That is not right. That is not right. So, I mean, I know that moving on to a different broker is different. It's hard. It's it's difficult because you're like, oh, what what will happen? Am I not allowed to be allowed to trade? Yeah, that's true. It because I've helped people transfer transition from Robinhood to to TD Ameritrade by a simple click of a button. Right, and it took took about three to five business days before their their equities are already in mm-hmm. in uh, TD Ameritrade. But mm-hmm. t- think about it this way: Let's say that you've already funded your TD Ameritrade, and you've already started making trades on TD Ameritrade, and you're kind of mimicking your portfolio from Robinhood. And then when that transfer is over, you're basically just averaging. Yeah. Same so, thing. right. And a uh, word of advice: If you have options. In Robinhood, and you're transitioning to TD Ameritrade, I would advise to cl- to close them because you don't know what's going to happen with those options, in terms of the pricing. If it dips five percent, you're you're going to see a five percent dip when it transitions over, and that's not going to be a good time. Cool. So close out your your options or exercise them if you want the shares, uh, but just know. Or I mean, if you are long long, maybe maybe you can transition those options over, but you know, just make sure that you cover your your butt. Right, Rick, did you use uh, Robinhood? I did. Um, my story with Robinhood is uh, they they had a couple of technical difficulties uh, back then. <laughs> couple? Uh, a lot. And I got stuck in one. I actually had Tesla calls, and I was up, I think, 2500 three grand. Again, and it, was, it was a separate one. I was actually heavy um, on this one. It was probably like 10 or 20 uh, call options. And... Um, the next day, they were down for like two days. It was like a Monday, Tuesday, they were down. Uh, Robin Hood saw, like, I think we have a hacker. It was on, like, CNBC and everything a while back. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I was like, oh, cool. So all my gains are technically done because no one can trade anything. Robin Hood's down. Um, then they shoot out an email about getting a lawsuit, uh, like, the following week or something. They're like, hey, we'll pay you 45 bucks if you just sign this letter and uh, say you're not going to be part of the lawsuit. <laughs> and I'm up. like, what the heck? What happened to my three, my three grand? Exactly. So I took a, I took a loss um, on that three grand. I think that Wednesday or Tuesday afternoon, it finally came back up. And I think I only made, like, 50 bucks off of it. Um, cause Jesus. it just dropped. Yeah. But then I just took the extra 45. I was like, eh, it's, it's yeah, but that's, I'm already up. that's, but that's, that's extremely deflating though. It is. And it was, you know, I was contacting customer support and, or technical support, customer support. And they're like, well, we can't do anything about it. Uh, we see everything. You. Yeah. It was like, so <clears throat> I asked one of my friends, uh, that I started trading with, his name is Demetrio. I think he's in the, um, Trading Daddy's up. Uh, oh, shut up! Shut yeah, up, shut up. I think it's swoosh. Uh, swoosh. I think he's in there. Oh, yes. I'm not sure. Shut up. Um, but I started trading with him, and I t- asked him. I was like, "Hey, what a uh, what app or what broker are you using?" He was like, uh, "Think or Swim." He's like, "Charts are better." Um, he's like, "You have a lot more, you know, accessibility with you know, Think or Swim. You have a net on on a phone app and online and everything else." Mm-hmm. And at first, I was I was super into Robinhood because. Like you said, John, it's super user friendly. Mm-hmm. So I knew everything about Robinhood inside and out. And then when I made the switch over to T, uh, to Think or Swim, I was like confused. I was lost. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I don't know how any of this works. Like the charts are a little bit too technical for me. I don't know what these lines mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm, I mean, um, after it's been about a year or so, I'm, I'm really liking it. Um, I'd rather do TD and pay the commission over. Mm-hmm commission free on robin hood and worry about you know them blocking a sale or a buy or you know going down again mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's that's me uh, <laughs> i think thinkorswim is probably a lot better than robin hood yeah and there's a bunch of different ones if you don't want to use thinkorswim there's there's casey trade there's trade station mm-hmm. um, e trade has their own charting i mean fidelity mm-hmm. has their own charting i mean all brokers have their own charting it's just a preference just get out of robin hood it's just it's bad all right i got a next one is uh luanum for what do you think oh this is our question where do you think pltr will get to by the end of the year <laughs> Whew, that's a loaded question um <clears throat> all right so let's let's take a look at it from a tesla perspective <laughs> no this is this is definitely <clears throat> real right so tesla was trading at 17 dollars a share when it first ipo'd 
it didn't start rocketing until Kathy Woods played it. Right? She invested heavy in, 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 in Tesla. Last year. Yeah. Last year. Uh-huh. Or maybe two years ago. Was it last year? No, it was last year. Um, it was last year? That was when pre-split and she just kept dumping money in it. Yeah. She's also very bullish on Palantir. Yeah, she so holds about, it, I think, almost 10 million. Yeah, almost 10 million shares of Palantir. And it's split between ARC F and ARC W. Uh-huh. Right, so it's not heavy heavy weighted on on a certain ETF of hers. Um, my price prediction, because institutional money is now finally understanding what Palantir does for them. Yeah, majority of the money is coming from government contracts, but what we heard on that call is most of the commercial space, right? The commercial implementations of a lot of these data um, data analysis companies right comes from government Mm -hmm. because if the government yeah yeah, if the government understands and and um and is endorsing you and keeps on buying contracts from you right the commercial space is going to follow suit because they want to be able to be compliant when it comes down to it and her buying of 10 million shares to me is such a bullish sign. Peter Thiel has 90 million shares. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I see, I really do see Palantir going to at least on the conservative side, I see Palantir going to 55 or 60 by the end of the year. That's conservative. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. So, so for the folks who don't know uh, Peter Thiel, uh, obviously go, he, you can just Google it. Um, he was um, a co-founder of PayPal, huge backer of Facebook. Um, Co-founder or a huge backer of Asan, ASAN, um, co-founder of how huge backer of Palantir, mm-hmm. um, and you know other companies that that he's into. I think he has a SPAC as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he, what we're doing here is we're pretty much following the money uh, where the big boys are, and uh, you know we're just trying to like scramble mm-hmm. the, the the crumbs. Um, but you're right. 80% of their, their jobs are with the government. And the rumor right now is AT&T and Facebook using Palantir software. That's going to be huge. That's going to be a, a big pump. That's going to be a big Facebook pump. Announces it. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. they, and then they're partnering with IBM for AI. They, they're, Rio Tinto is one of the biggest mining companies out in Brazil. They're using Palantir for their data analysis. There's a lot of partnerships that they're working on, and the software is only going to get better. We have another demo day in April. We have uh, that March event that John said. We still have potential S&P 500 inclusion if the institutions really do believe in it. Because right now, it's a, it's a, it's a company that nobody understands. And they're the analysts. Dude, I hate these analysts so much. They downgrade the stock so many times to a point where it's like, dude, why are you doing this? Do you hate it that much? Like, no, what did yeah, they do it's funny because CNBC was bearish on it like two, three weeks ago, and then now mm-hmm. they're bullish. Yeah, right? <laughs> these, analysts, these monkey analysts are, I mean, do your, again, this is this boils down to uh, to us doing our own research, and this is kind of re- reinforces our convictions about the stock, right? And we're not going to dump any money into a stock that we don't understand, Right. And I feel that this, I don't know, that like once in a lifetime, you'll catch the wave of a stock and that's going to be your core position for a while now, mm-hmm. for a while. And I believe this is my core position. Like I could sell everything else as long as I don't let go of my Palantir shares. I'm happy. You got them diamond hands, huh? Yep. Right there. Right there. Right there. Um, and, and it's something that I'm willing to, uh, to add more to, right? And I think my my overall investment strategy when it comes down to Palantir is, you know, buying three leaps every year and exercising the leaps at the end of the year. So every year I get a fresh batch of like 300 shares. As the portfolio grows, your buying power grows too. I mean, it, it just comes with being being in the market as opposed to timing it, right? If you're, you know, doing the options for for profit, yeah, do it for profit enjoy it uh, but we're we've hit a bottom at 25 and there's support at 25 yep that got me excited you know what i mean 34 easy easy next week easy next week. as long we as the market 45 yeah i gotta time that 
I was uh, talking to Nico before we started recording <clears throat> how we were talking about Palantir, uh, what was it, on Friday. And I'll told, I, I think I texted you guys. I was like, hey, I'm going to wait till it hits 27 ish. And it did, and my phone died. <laughs> And I couldn't get it. I couldn't execute my trade. <laughs> oh, like, God damn it. <laughs> but but in, in terms of that, right? Like I would suggest for you to look into buying the buying the 2022 leaps. Yeah, and that's what I was looking into, but I was also looking um probably I think you said August. So I wanted to August? cut I wanted to cut it a little bit closer because you know my own DD. Um, so I was looking at like April or May <laughs> for the, I was like, yeah, <laughs> for the 35 range, uh, maybe into 40, uh, mm-hmm. if I, <clears throat> if like, say like the next couple of weeks go good, I want to see how it plays out first, but also wait for a dip, uh, before I, uh, jump into it. And we're also in a, in a space in the company for the company, the lockup period is over. Mm-hmm. That's not looming over our heads anymore. Right. There's still going to be some some pressure because not everybody sold their their um, pre IPO stock because of where the price was because it got driven down so much. Dude, I'm not going to let that go if I've seen it at 45. If I'm an if I've held on to shares previously, if I've seen it at 45, I'm not going to let it go at 25. Get out of here. Yeah. So once we hit that top, there may be more pressure coming down. But again, mm-hmm. buy more. That's that's just me. That's me personally. That's what I'm going to do. Well, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna add on to that is um the their outstanding shares, their float is already huge. It's like a billion shares available to the market. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're gonna do any crazy um, you know, offerings because first of all, they pay their, you know, executives through, you know, options, stock options. So um it, I don't I don't see them doing any offerings, you know, soon or at all because mm-hmm. of the, the how big the float is. So, um, you know, it's their best interest to, to drive up the, the stock because that's how they make money off of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I see, I see this as, uh, and my price target for 2022 is 150. My price target for the next three to four years, I could see this at like 380 or 480. Wow, you're just trying to retire early, huh? Damn, I mean, dude, if I can, why not? I'm just, well. I'm just trying to take, you know, two lucky winners to Vegas, you know, with, with room. <laughs> Rooms and flight paid for <laughs> the T V conference, the trading daddy's conference. <laughs> trading Sell. by the pool. Trading by the pool. Sell me this pen. <laughs> Sell me this pen. Um I, I got one more. Um right. what are some tips uh from Peach? Uh what are some tips you would give people for portfolio diversification for beginners? Don't ask me that question because I have Palantir and Tesla and Neo, uh-huh. and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, I would, um, so this kind of goes back to what John taught me and it, when it comes down to watch lists, right? Um, when it comes down to watch lists, yeah, you're going to, at first you're going to be putting everything in a watch list cause you're like super excited. Right. But at some point you're going to have to really take a, take a break and sit down and segment these off by sector. Right. Always remember that a company is built because, because of, uh, how it solves one specific problem. Multiple companies are trying to solve the same exact problem in different methods. So one of them is going to be a leader. So why not segment them into sectors so that you can see all of these companies that deal in EVs, right? What's the, what's the, who's the leader? All these companies are in, are in banking. Who's not the worst bank? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? Like food services, all of that stuff can be segmented into sectors. And that's how you, uh, you know, try to pick the best one to be part of your portfolio so that yep. you can be diverse. Well, to, to um, R- Ricky, you're going to go after. Um, I just want to let you know, I'm having trouble right now with portfolio diversification. <laughs> 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 because here, here, uh, I'm not saying, you know, I'm <laughs> but what I'm going to tell you guys right now is, you know, yes. Simon the third, yes, he he had a great you know portfolio, amazing. Education. Yeah, he's pretty diversified. He he has stocks you know in every industry or every, um, you know sector, right? And for me right now, it's it's not the right way to 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 have a portfolio because 
currently I'm pretty much heavy on Palantir. Um, I'm heavy on Tesla and I'm heavy on Neo. I also have my other, you know, positions. Like for example, I, I have um, Salesforce uh, CRM. That's the ticker symbol. I also have Costco. I'm heavy on that one. I also have Walmart. Uh, I'm heavy on that one too. And I'm also I'm I'm in uh, Lockheed Martin uh, LMT, uh, which is an aerospace uh, stock. I'm heavy on that one too. But I would say you know a big portion of my portfolios would be um, would would have Palantir, which is a, you know a no no, right? But to me, my investing style is somewhat different from others. Um, yes, I held on to the dip, but at the same time, you know I have you know belief in the company that you know we're just hitting a rough patch, but. You know, technicals and fundamentals are aligning right now. So to me, you know, yes, we, we hit a rough patch, but, you know, I still have that vision of, you know, we're, we're going to get through it. Uh, we're all in this together. That like mm -hmm. that. Game. All in this together. <laughs> we're all in this together. Um, and I, I really do think that, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, 30s and 40s again uh, real soon. So. Uh, right now we're not celebrating, but when we hit in the forties again, I'm going to be drinking that diamond encrusted cup. Right. In my right. Humvee right. limo. Hum in the Humvee limo. <laughs> in the Humvee limo down, rolling down Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ricky, in terms of uh, diversification of your portfolio? Um, so with that, I just diversified maybe Thursday or Friday. Um, oh, nice. So for me, I have a set goal that I want to reach with each dividend stock that I invest in. Um, I want to reach a certain number and then diversify to another one, but then keep adding on to, um, you know, my main one, which is going to be PSEC. Um, <clears throat> so I started off with PSEC and then I hit, I'm a couple shares off from my goal. Um, I had some extra money left over, so I diversified into um, ARR. So now that I'm close enough to my goal, I'm going to start putting more money into ARR, reach that goal or close to it, and then diversify again uh, just so I have something to focus on. Because if I start focusing on too much, then I start losing track of what I really want to do. Um, so that's what I you know, talk, uh, told myself is just focus on one thing at a time grow it don't worry about it leave it alone because you're still um, you know again dividends are going to give you a kickback at the end of the month or quarterly mm -hmm. so that's really what i'm banking on is just focusing on one stock at a time growing that then pit, you know going back putting a little bit back into the other ones and then you know keep growing that and keep accumulating on the long term nice yeah <clears throat> so um John, you want to talk about um, reiteration of Walmart real quick? Oh, yeah. So um, I know we have uh, one more question about Kenny. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, so we, we had a we had big news uh, with Walmart because uh, I'm heavy in Walmart and I'm pretty sure, you know, some folks are. Um, Walmart missed uh, earnings this Thursday. OK, and I'm. And I just want to say, you know, I'm not worried about it uh, because the whole trajectory for Walmart, it's still an, an upward trend, right? Um, you know, no support's been broken. There's actually a gap fill around 144. So I'm not worried about, you know, Walmart uh, not hitting that 144 spot again. Uh, the retail giant is aggressively investing uh, 14 billion, okay, in 2022 to focus on supply chain, uh, automation, uh, other initiatives and technology. They're trying to compete heavily um, with Amazon. Um, and then they're trying to they're actually testing, um, uh, you know, EV trucks. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're going to win that contract. They, I, I don't know, but um, they, they've been testing it for the past uh, couple of months. Well, whoever and wins that contract is going to be huge, huge. Yeah. Uh, so just imagine, you know, a delivery truck, um, you know, from its supply chain delivering it to Walmart and, you know, there's no driver. I mean, it's cutting jobs. But at the same time, you know, they're using EVs, uh, they're, they're, they're green, uh, they're saving a lot of money, um, you know, I'm, I'm investing in Walmart because of the, this whole initiative, right? Um, also, they're expanding same day delivery, uh, which is now live at 3000 uh, stores. Okay, this makes it tougher to beat them in merchandising and uh, speed of service. 
Um, also, they're raising um, their wages for 425,000 um, employees, okay? Um, Walmart itself is a cash cow, and they're just dumping, you know, $14 billion, uh, back to the company. Plus, on top of that, Walmart announced a $20 billion dollar uh, stock buyback, meaning, you know, it's only going to get stronger. The, 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 the core stock itself, it's only going to get stronger because the company, you know, owns, you know, majority of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And they raised its uh, quarterly dividend, uh, by, uh, by a penny, I would say a penny per quarter, but it's, it's up to two, $2 and 20 cents for the year, uh, from uh, 216. So I'm super happy about that as an investor. Um, so going back to uh, raising wages for, you know, majority of their employees, um, we're talking about like from 13 to $19 ranges, okay? Um, this pay hike increase, um, you know, just creates competition among other companies, okay? And then this will force others, you know, like other retail giants to match them. And then most will struggle because they don't have that enough, you know, mm -hmm. cash, um, you know, backing from, Walmart's just a giant. It's a 400 billion market cap. Okay. Um, you know, I know Target, um, was it last year? They raised their minimum starting wage, I think to like 13 or something. Yeah. 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 Um, so that kind of like enticed, uh, Walmart to do, to do something, you know, uh, about it. The only bearish, um, case that I have for Walmart right now is that the, remember the justice department sued Walmart back in mm. December. And, you know, they're also, obviously they're facing legal um, challenges with them uh, because they said that, you know, Walmart fueled the uh, the drug crisis, the opioid uh, mm. crisis, which is, I, that. I don't dumb. believe in it because you can get cracked like behind 7-Eleven easily. Yeah, I remember <laughs> a guy. <laughs> yeah, so like to blame Walmart and that was just a, you know, a shot, like a, a low blow at Walmart because dude, Walmart, over here, you can get a rifle and be in and in and out in like ten minutes. Yeah. Is there a gun problem? I don't think so. You know, yeah. are people shooting one another? I don't think so. So that that was just a low blow, and that's just my opinion, obviously. So, but yeah, that's just my uh, restock of the week. Restock of the week is Walmart. Restock get it? of restock. the week. Um. So last question from uh from Kenny. We didn't forget you, Kenny. Shout out to Kenny. Um. Uh, what time should I start reviewing charts or potential plays? Thanks. Love you guys. I'll, I'll, be, quick. You too, You're awesome. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, I do it on a daily because obviously this is my job. I do it the night before. The night before, I do majority of my extensive work like charting, you know, planning, um, you know, setting the, the exits and the, the entries. And if I'm in, you know, different positions, I review my positions. Like, for example, Palantir, um, even though it's a long term stock, I still want to see, you know, where things are at. Um, obviously I'm in Tesla. I still want to see where things are at, what Elon's tweeting, you know, cause his tweets are powerful, right? Uh, I'm also in Neo, so I'm reading all the articles about, you know, what's the next, you know, projects for them and where are they looking into? Um, so, and then on top of that, I'm looking at the general market overall. Like I'm looking at, um, the Dow spy QQQ, um, because I want to prepare myself better, um, for what's, you know, upcoming because, the more prepared you are, basically, uh, the better. And, you know, the following day, all you got to do is just follow the plan. Okay, I set my, my my target here. It hit. Okay, just cut it. All right. Or maybe if a position didn't work so well, then maybe you cut it. You had a plan, so you always got to stick to the plan. Um, never go into a trade without a plan or if you've never done the homework the night before, the day before. The, the day before or the morning before, you know, like yeah. the morning before the, the market opens. Um, super important because you're, it's basically, you know, you're flying the plane without a, a flying license or whatever. I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. So That's dangerous. Yeah. The way I prepare is I look at screeners. Um, uh, I screen for after market runners. Uh, I look for in the morning, I look for pre-market runners and if I if those match, if the aftermarket runners are continuing to pre-market for the stocks that I looked at for aftermarket, I, I'm fairly bullish on them. Uh, I take a look at inventory. I mean, when you're running a running a business, you want to take inventory of everything just to make sure that you have your your assets 
uh, that you're willing to, you know, to sell to your customers that they're still in good working order. So I take inventory of my positions, trying to see uh, if there's strength, if there's any weaknesses, uh, what does the chart look like? Um, and based on that, I mean, I, I formulate a plan and that's how I primarily build my watch list is making sure that I look at the charts previously the night before. And then in the morning, I, re I validate what I'm seeing. And then um, and pretty much it's set in and forget it thing because the stock market's not really like something that you hyper focus on unless you're like scalping left and right. Um, but as long as you have a plan, there's a way for you to just to get in the trade let it pan out and then sell it off the next day. If, if there's more strength, hold it. I mean, there's so many ways for you to do it, but in terms of finding the plays and charting, it's usually done after like around before you go to sleep, before you go to sleep, take some time, take 30 minutes out of your day to, to learn the charts. And it's actually a learning experience too. Cause that way you familiarize yourself with how a certain stock moves and you um, you're better equipped with more knowledge. Perfect. Ricky? Um, what are charts? <laughs> <laughs> Complete 360. <laughs> what are charts? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I go on stock twits and look at everyone's comments. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hey, um, you know what? Those are actually still, you know, those are signal callers now. Yeah. Like Wall Street bets, stock twits, they're, they're signal callers now. So don't take they're uh, although they'll say it in a meme don't take yeah. that lightly no yeah We've most of them are work. most of yeah. them are trolls and most of them you know are bearish or bullish yeah you gotta filter out the the crap from the you know from the stuff that you actually do your own dd on mm -hmm. and what you see so um <clears throat> i mean as of you know i'm not really trading per se so i'm not really looking at charts at the moment i'm just focused on again my goals to build my dividend portfolio so, nice. I mean, um, if I'm not looking at anything else, I mean, my my time in the market or my my day in the market really consists of just checking in every couple hours. I'm not looking at anything else. I'm just looking at my portfolio, see how it's doing. Uh, I do have some cash set aside just in case it does mm -hmm. dip. I can buy probably like, you know, 20 or 30 shares yeah. you know, just on the side, uh, just to average down. But other than that, I mean, I don't really do much. Which is, I ask, I, I tend to ask you guys, but then I don't really do anything about that information. <laughs> Ricky, I just, you can not, go now. So, so you're telling us okay. to not I'm respond. To you. <laughs> so we're no. no longer responding to your text messages. Right? <laughs> no, so so John's always pitching um, me I me uh, stock stocks to watch with dividends. So I put those all in my um, in my watch list. And then what I do is put that put certain ones with the higher dividends on my notes, so I always have something to reference back instead of searching through our text messages um, to look for you know the stocks and stuff because I tend to forget which ones. So I have a list um, on my notes, and then it tells me a price breakdown of like monthly, quarterly, and um, how much um, you know that dividend pays out. So that's what I mainly pay attention to. Not so much of the charts, um, just because that's not mainly what I'm focusing on at the moment. But um, I'm just, that's basically what I've been doing, is just trying to focus on one thing at a time again. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, any any final trades, John, before we clean up house? Uh, for next week, actually, nothing. I'm, I'm holding on to uh, Palantir and then see if I can sell some covered calls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> covered call boys. Um, so for me, uh, I just want to say um, Neo is a position that I entered uh, this, la this past week. It saw a little bit of a dip. I'm going to average down, add more calls to it. They did announce that their battery is now going to be doing a thousand kilometers for the range, which is extremely bullish for the ET7 that's coming uh, by the next month or so, right? And they're also having a, a coming to America event. So that's going to be very bullish once... It's it, like uh, they, Eddie Murphy? Like Eddie Murphy. <laughs> like Eddie Murphy. Like Eddie... Yeah, exactly like Eddie Murphy. Like coming to America event, like where they're going to... Most likely going to announce that they're going to enter the American market. So which is... That's going to be huge. That's going to be fat. 
that's gonna be fat. You're gonna see you're gonna see Neo at probably it's gonna be spiking. I feel like it's gonna be spiking. That's why so, I'm, I'm heavy on Neo. Yeah. yeah. So Neo's gonna be a good uh, good play, uh, and we've seen Neo right now. It's trading. It's like following Tesla. It's not it's not really doing so hot. So um, once that happens, I might you know add more or extend my extend my calls. Uh, but with that being said, Ricky, do you have any um, any? I know that you don't chart watch, but do you have anything that you're excited to buy this week? Um, I was looking into you know Palantir. I'm hoping my phone doesn't die so I can get my uh, calls. <laughs> I'm gonna try and Target, charge. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to. But um, that's that's what I'm aiming for. Um, I'm probably gonna wait for another dip before I just jump into it. Um, because when I tend to just jump into things, it tends to go down so mm-hmm. i'm gonna wait for it to dip and then try and jump in um at the right time when you know when i see fit for myself nice. patience then, yeah nice. like that. all right well with that being said i just want to um let you guys know that we are running a contest we are running a bitcoin contest and the the prize for the bitcoin contest shout out to jeff actually um we're actually going to do a 200 dollars bitcoin contest for the first prize and the second prize is going to be a hundred dollar Bitcoin contest, a uh, Bitcoin, you know, uh, raffle too. So there are instructions going to be posted on the Instagram, and I can't stress this enough. Follow the instructions. <laughs> follow the instructions. If you don't follow the instructions and you don't get included in the raffle, and you start crying saying, "Hey, how come I did this, 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 and this, and I didn't get included? I'm missing one entry." Yeah, follow the instructions. Right. Yeah, Four, four. Um, you could you could enter four times by doing the activities, right? That's going to be in the rules. Um, and I guess that's it. I hope somebody wins. Uh, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky won the last time. <laughs> I won last time. <laughs> he won the Bitcoin last time. How does how, how is your Bitcoin doing, by the way? Um, so we had a problem getting it into the Bitcoin wallet. So me uh-huh. and Jeff uh, talked about it. He just sent me a Venmo of just a hundred bucks. He said, "Go put no. that towards your Bitcoin." Um, I took that hundred bucks and put it towards my dividend account. <laughs> nice. Well, you know I, what? Yeah, I was like, ah, the Bitcoin. Uh, when when I won, I think Bitcoin was around thirty thousand. Yeah. Whoa, you <laughs> could have. <laughs> 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 but you know, in, uh, <laughs> like, uh, okay. I was like, I don't. Uh, yeah, I know. Way to go, Rick. <laughs> Good job. Keep doing this 360s. Because <laughs> it's the same you. You did one of these. You did one of these like you shot it. Like you shot it. You shot it. You were like, yep. And then it didn't go in. It didn't go in. I was like, damn it. <laughs> All right. But with that being said, follow us on Instagram. Follow me at Trading Poppy. Follow John at John C. Trades. Follow Ricky. Ricky plays. And he also has a Twitch. You want to. Plug that uh, Twitch in real quick. Yeah, Facebook, uh, fb.gg slash A, it's Ricky Gaming. Uh, there you go. Thursday, Fridays, uh, probably Saturdays, and I'll probably be on after this stream. Nice, 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 nice. So hop on that stream if you guys want to see some good gaming. What are you playing right now, by the way? Um, I'm grinding Escape from Tarkov. Um, Warzone got – it's pretty complacent for me right now. Uh, Escape from Tarkov is a uh, loot survival game. Mm. Um, it's super hardcore, um, so and that's what I really like. It's it's pretty fun. It's irritating when you lose your stuff, but um, it's it's a grind nonetheless. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, go to tradingdaddies.com for all your news, all your merch. And with that being said, let's get trading. Yeah. <laughs>